Welcome to the Silver Screen Project, where we look back at a few films in anticipation of an exciting new release. As we look forward to the release of Matt Reeves' The Batman, today we're going to be looking at Batman Begins from 2005. That's right, the uh, classic Nolan Batman origin film. The first of his Dark Knight trilogy. It was kind of the first, it was the first Batman film for a while and it kind of changed superhero films quite dramatically when it came out. Eight years since Batman and Robin in 1997. And uh, hype was really massive for this at the time. Yeah, The trailers being like dark, gritty, crazy, all that sort of thing. High budget, realistic take on superheroes. And I don't think I'd seen this for a long time. Um, So I was quite, you know, it was quite new for me watching this again, which was uh, really interesting. Yeah. um, So I think this film is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I Um, was quite surprised and refreshed, actually. Yeah. I've got a friend who stands by it being the best Batman film. And I'm not sure he's wrong. Yeah. This genuinely is incredible. People go to the sequel, but... yeah. This has got so much good stuff in it. I was kind of dreading it because it's an origin story. And it does the Nolan jump around thing, which is quite, as I said, refreshing and means that you don't spend too much time going, right, get to this bit, get to this bit. The origin's Um, really good. It's well paced. Um, There's not a lot of Batman in this, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's like an hour into the film before he first suits up. And it would have been nice to have more, but it's more of a Bruce Wayne film. And I think Christian Bale is arguably the best Bruce Wayne we've seen. I would say he is. Because a lot of the time, Bruce Wayne is just the extra bit. Yeah. Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne is so believable. uh, And also believable that the Bruce Wayne is the character, not the Batman. And we see the struggles and we see him. He has a particularly formative evening which i might get a chance to talk about later on yeah um which isn't the one that you might think it might be but uh, okay yeah but generally yeah i think uh, really, really, really stands up well and i think you're right i think is at least on par if not better than uh the film we'll be looking at next week one thing that's always stood out for me when i first watched it yeah that sounds but is i think scarecrow's really good in this like yes scarecrow's kind of like a b-list villain yeah it could easily be really bad well this is the first time he was ever on in a live action film and i think i believe killian murphy auditioned for batman that's right alongside there was a big list i haven't got it in front yeah. of me some surprise i think henry cavill was on one of yes the, he the was people, I, I, yeah. I think christian bale had like f- read arkham asylum yeah that's like, a few right years before yeah. was like if there's ever another batman film i want to do i it. think he also auditioned for robin in batman uh, Batman Forever (laughs) yeah so that's uh, Um, glad he didn't get that yeah and like considering Scarecrow is kind of a mystical villain and this is a realistic world the way they do it with like the drug thing yeah is and Scarecrow is genuinely terrifying in this. Yeah, well, as Jonathan Crane, he's quite understated, especially at the start. He's kind of unassuming. Yeah. And we see him kind of get more unhinged. And there's that particular bit when I think it's one of the first times that anyone else says the Batman, when he's like excitedly scared, like looking around, he's like, the Batman's here. And from then on, I feel like we really get yeah, proper scarecrow. The bit as well where he goes, I think it's Falcone. Yeah, is being yeah, like yeah. in an interview room, and he turns on. That's the first time he falls. Yeah, really and that is just like thing. this is yeah. horrifying and amazing. And the first time uh, him and Batman have the encounter, Batman's completely taken off guard, and he, yeah. he kind of it's kind of embarrassing. He's on fire in the street, just in front of normal people. It's just yeah. like a really shit time for Batman. Scarecrow, even though Scarecrow isn't the main villain. No, he does I think really he's the stand standout one, really. He is. Because um, there's Henry Ducard, who, if anyone's ever seen a picture of Ra's al Ghul, knows immediately that Liam Neeson is playing Yes, because originally, it pretends that it's Ken Watanabe. Yes, is... well, that's what I was, that was one of the things I was going to mention. I didn't realise it was him, because no, he's quite a lot younger and he's bald. He is. But I think I read that Kristen Odom was so amazed with him Right. Which is why he then insisted on getting him for Inception. I see. So he's like, yes, of Ken course. Montanabi's yeah, great. Yeah, so yeah. he then brought him back. Yeah. Um, but I think Ra's al Ghul's good. Yeah. Like Liam Neeson All is the training really good. stuff's good. Yeah. He's a good kind of father figure because a lot of this is him trying to find a father figure with yeah. Alfred, with even Lucius Fox as well. Um, and yeah, Ra's al Ghul, Henry Ducard is, is one of those people. And a lot of the stuff that he learns is obviously from him from the league of shadows 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think Liam Neeson has a good performance. The Ligo Shadow stuff is good. And then, yeah, Ra's al Ghul coming back and revealing himself to be Ra's al Ghul yes. is fun. It's a fun twist, even if you know it. Yes, it kind of comes out of nowhere if you don't know it's coming because he's like, oh, because someone says in the party, oh, I want you to meet uh, Mr. Ra's al Ghul or whatever. And he's like, and he's, what? Ra's al Ghul's dead. <laughs> yes, it's, it's And then he does the fun. whole, oh, I hate all of you. He does his Bruce Wayne is a dick persona, yeah. which he does very well in this. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, yeah. And the, yeah, the League of Shadows training stuff is brilliant. Yeah. All of it. So even even the stuff before when he's in like the prison fighting yeah, amazing. is great. And then, I think that was one of the first trailers was that prison fight. Yeah. And it's just very And good it stuff. makes you laugh that like the moment he decides that, like, no, I'm not going to kill people. And then he burns down the League of Shadows. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, there's a lot eh. of arson in this film. I yeah. Saw. The other bit that really <laughs> makes oh, you laugh is like, we're jumping around, obviously, but when Ra's al Ghul eventually dies on the train, yes. and he's like, yeah. he's like, I don't, ki- I don't have to kill you. I know, I don't want to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. And it's I'm like, like you definitely you just killed him. You just, just killed him. him. You just killed him. You killed him. Yeah. yeah, and then there's just like a very intense train crash. And you're <laughs> yeah, like, this like, guy is definitely, definitely dead. He's definitely killed him. Yeah, um, but there's we kind of mentioned already, but like the they've got a lot of A list actors in this that are yeah, all brilliant. They did, yeah. Like Michael Caine is a brilliant Alfred. Lucius yeah. Fox, Morgan Freeman's great. Christian Bale's great. Liam Fantastic. Neeson's great. Killian yeah. Murphy's great. Gary Oldman, very good. I was kind of surprised he doesn't get much play until about fifty minutes in, but it makes sense because of the way the story is told. Yeah, he's 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 a sergeant. Yeah, in still, I really he? enjoyed him helping towards the end when he's driving the the tumbler Batmobile. And he's just yeah. like kind of loving it, but also like, oh, watch out. I'm a cop. It's all <laughs> yeah. very cool. Uh, I, it might be my favorite Gary Oldman yeah. role. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the I, whole three films. Yeah, of course, yeah, the three yeah, films. Yeah. I love Gary Oldman, but I think growing up, this is one that stood out for me most. Yeah. Like more than like Sirius Black or <laughs> other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I really liked, um, there's a particular Batman year one kind of scene a lot of it is based on that loosely yes the uh the showdown with police with the bat signal emitter thing in his boot yeah it's all very theatrical which i know he's mentioned a couple of times yeah i think it's the only time he uses bats in the trilogy it's the only time he does yeah and that's almost directly from a year one thing where he's he's on the kind of ropes police are coming in it's almost taken directly but very well adapted yeah it's great how this is it's this. It's very clearly the first part of a trilogy, but at the same time, yeah. it's a great standalone Batman yeah. film. I think, arguably, compared to the other two, uh, well, especially the last one, which we'll it, talk about at yeah, some point. Yeah, it holds its own. Yeah, like if this, if they didn't release any sequels to this, this would still be a fantastic yeah, Batman absolutely. film. Absolutely, yeah, and that's kind of rare now because a lot of superhero films you have to have seen Seen at least one of the other or leads up to a sequel yeah we it does end on a great sequel bay with the joker car yeah fantastic which i remember being like oh Uh, shit oh my god they're doing the joker yeah yeah yeah. even though obviously the joker's in most batman films yeah but not having him in the first one of the series as well is quite quite a bold move yeah, um, like even even choosing Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow as the villains yeah, is yeah. quite quite ballsy. Ra's yeah. al Ghul makes sense as a origin stuff. It does, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah no, it's um, yeah. Very I also enjoyable. also really liked the Narrows, like the uh, the slum area of Gotham, which we don't really see in the other two films. It's yeah. quite clean after that. Um, yeah, just one other kind of bit that I quite enjoyed there. Um, one of the the trivia pieces that I found out yeah. was um, so in that slum bit he one of the, the kid he kind of yes, saves yeah. is Jack Gleason <laughs> yes who plays um, Joffrey Baratheon Joffrey Baratheon uh, but did you know that wasn't the first time Christian Bale and Jack Gleason had been in a film together is it uh, Rain of Fire Rain of Fire <laughs> yes, I love I Rain of Fire Rain uh, of Fire is very good yeah. but yeah I was like oh that's cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> very cool uh, what did you think about uh, Katie Holmes, Rachel Dawes? Uh, she's fine. I, I, I'm not surprised that she was recast. I'm sure it wasn't because she wasn't great, but yeah. I just I, I thought the character was kind of just like not. I also didn't really realize anything. that Rachel Dawes was created for this film. Yes, I found that out recently. As I well. just I think because we were we were like what 11, 12 when this came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of assumed that Rachel was a Batman character. I think maybe they should have just gone with the character that was already. I think created. she's a good character. Like, I just think she doesn't. I mean, she does a lot of the stuff. 
there's nothing unique to that character really. No, but having like the childhood friend slash love interest who yeah. sees she's an anchor back to his original life. Yeah, and, and I she think kind it's... of says at the end like that. There's they make a big point of like Bruce Wayne is the mask, which is quite an interesting take, yes. which a lot of comics and stuff have done. And the fact they do it at the end of this film rather than in future films is you know interesting. And her knowing the identity by the end of the film. Rather than finding it out in the second or third yeah. film, like with Spider Man, uh, it reminds me of the the whole the uh, Bruce Wayne is the mask is I think it's in the animated series where Wonder Woman has like the lasso of truth oh. and all the Justice League <laughs> have to say their real names and it's like Clark Kent, <laughs> Diana Prince, and he just says Batman because that is his real, <laughs> identity. His real identity, which yeah. is a bit of a joke of that, but in this it really is that. Like... Yeah, <laughs> there's a moment when he's uh, strutting down Arkham Asylum, and all the criminals are looking at him. I'm like, this is pretty cool, but then he's just like waddling, and I'm like, I don't think the suit is that good. And I know they improve on it in this in the later ones. Yeah, but... I like I like this. I think it's I think yeah. it kind of works as a starter suit because yeah. it's very much this is Batman. At I his think beginnings. it was something like that, just really. It stuck with me because he is kind of waddling down the road, <laughs> <running> <laughs> road down the street. Yeah. One of the other things that I, I didn't particularly love about uh, this is that uh, so much of his experiences are all in one evening. So when Joe Chill goes on trial, first of all, I love that he was just going to straight up shoot Joe Chill. Yes. I thought it shows the dark place that he's in. Yeah. But he learns that guns don't solve problems because he sees Joe Chill gets murdered. And he doesn't feel any better. Rachel then shows him that gangsters are ruining the city. And then Falcone and- then says, you need a secret identity, otherwise I'll kill your family. And fear is an important tool for ruling the city. Yes. And also you need to go and learn about the criminals. And he's like, cool, I've got all my... Uh- and it reaffirms his <laughs> don't kill thing. Yeah. He has the gun moment where he has a flashback yeah. and throws it. It is. It works well for the film, I, but it all happens in two hours, and I'm yeah. like, it's kind of funny that I saw it's a thing that they so well. they looked at footage of. I think it's Robert Kennedy's assassination, right? Okay, because that yeah. was in like a crowded room, and yeah, some guys yeah, yeah, yeah. They looked similar, at yeah. the footage of that to tr- and basically replicated it for this, right? Interesting, which is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's done quite well, um, but yeah, it's just. Yeah, that that condensing of his experiences is yeah. kind of funny considering he's supposed to be like in his early 20s at that point. He's 30. He's, oh, it's his 30th birthday right, party okay. during. Any other trivia? Yeah, so there? one other thing that made me laugh was that uh, Christian Bale lost his voice three times during <laughs> filming doing the Batman voice. I feel like this is the only film where the Batman voice is really a big thing where it's like, Oh, I'm Batman. Well, is it not much in the next one? Um, I mean, but oh, right. Batman so previously, far, yeah. he, he just, he like just a, talks like... Like a Kevin Conroy kind of like, I'm Batman. Yeah, but this is the, oh, I'm Batman. Yeah. And, it made and me I thought it. he didn't do it. And then suddenly he does the interrogation with the cop and it's like full on. You're like, wow. Yeah, okay, it's cool, it's cool. a bit silly. It made me laugh that Christian Bale lost his voice three times yeah. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just assumed they had like a voice enhancer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows about his dramatic weight loss and gain, yes. um, which is quite a big deal now anyway. One of the things I thought was interesting was that he, to date still, is the youngest actor to play Batman, um, yeah. even younger than Christian, uh, <laughs> he is Christian Bale, <laughs> than Robert Pattinson, who's now 35. Is he? So I thought God, that Robert yeah. Pattinson would have been the youngest yeah. now. And um, Ben Affleck was like 44 uh, or something, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, maybe even older than that, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think he was 30, which <laughs> yeah, makes sense because the character's right. 30 it as well. Lines up perfectly, yeah. God, what yeah. are we going to be doing when we're 30? <laughs> <laughs> so overall, I think that film is brilliant. Yeah. Um, having watched that, would you say you're more hyped for The Batman? Proj yes or Proj no more hyped? Uh, Proj yes. I'm definitely Proj yes. Yeah, because like, realistically, from what we've heard, I think... The Batman takes place in year two, is what they keep saying. Yeah. So it's almost the sequel to this in some ways. Do you know what I mean? So we skip it. Effectively, we won't have to rewatch this year, which is very, as I've said a few times, refreshing. I'm looking forward to the Batman. I think it's going to be good. So watching like the best Batman films can only make me more excited for it. Yeah. I don't really care for 
Justice League or Dawn of Justice. No, so no. going back to these ones, they're like, oh yeah, Batman's a really good character if he's done properly. Yeah, I mean, also with the Zack Snyder ones, about three quarters of those films would be watching other people do stuff. Yeah, there's, so there's, there's not, not there's not film. as much Batman. We could watch the warehouse scene and have some fun with that. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's Batman Begins. And also the beginning of the Silver Screen Project. Yes, it is. We will come back next time to watch The Dark Knight yes. as we get to part two of The Dark Knight trilogy. Everyone's favourite comic book film. I think For good reason or not, we'll find out. A lot out. of people consider it to be the best comic book film. And we'll challenge that and, and we'll come we'll back and say talk that it's about it. the worst film anyone's ever seen. <laughs> but that's for next time. For now, thank you for listening. And see you next time. <laughs> Good night. I'm Batman. <laughs>